Possibly one of the most dangerous things in your shop actually came as a safety device with your table saw. Wait, what? <laughs> that clip was from a video by 731 Woodworks that came out about five days ago. I'll put a link to it below so you can watch the whole thing. Right after it was posted, as you can imagine, I got emails asking if it's true that push sticks are now considered to be dangerous. Now looking at the thumbnail, and if you just skimmed through the video, I can see how some folks might have been confused. After all, every woodworker is taught from practically birth that push sticks are one of the most important safety devices you can and should use with your table saw. So why was he saying things like this? That these are actually very dangerous. Well, he's right in that some have been injured by using the wrong type of push stick. And that's an important distinction. It's not the push stick itself that's inherently dangerous. Not even all plastic push sticks are dangerous, as some people seem to have gleaned from that video. Man, these shockingly aren't that great. But there are certain types of plastic and certain practices that can cause injury, and you do need to know about these. So I'm glad 731 drew attention to this. And I want to make it clear that this isn't me calling out anything in his video. In fact, I contacted him and asked him if he would mind if I made this follow-up. And he agreed, so this is a collaboration to add some important context for those who may have missed certain key points in that original video. Because let's face it, exciting shots like this... I felt it pop! ...can sometimes steal the attention from less flashy but important statements like this. While I didn't get a violent explosion was what I was kind of hoping to catch on camera, it's proven that these things are wildly unpredictable as to what's going to happen when they hit the blade. The whole thing started with a social media discussion about injuries sustained when a plastic push stick made contact with a table saw blade and shattered, sending shards flying at the operator like shrapnel. This is a real thing. Cheap plastic table saw accessories, including feather boards and pusher paddles and even push sticks, can get a little bit sketchy if they contact the blade. If you want to be sure that your safety device does keep you safe, you have to understand a couple key points. First, a push stick, like a finger, is not meant to touch the saw blade. Sure, if I ever do touch the blade, I'd rather lose this than this, but that doesn't mean that I should be careless with the push stick just because I can buy a new one of these for a lot less than I can sew one of these back on. Unless it is a wooden push block that's specifically meant to be cut into, you should keep it out of direct contact with the blade the best you can. Of course, accidents do happen, which is why we use push sticks instead of our fingers. So you should also consider the material makeup of your push stick, or really any plastic safety device that's going to get near your saw blade. Some plastics react well, and some not so much. In the 731 video, he tries to show how plastic sticks can shatter by using a makeshift testing device while it's hiding behind some plywood so he can shield himself from potential shrapnel. Interestingly, he wasn't able to achieve any explosions or catastrophic shattering. That's because many push sticks, particularly those made by reputable companies who specialize in woodworking products, are made from carefully selected plastics that are shatter resistant while other companies that just push out cheap plastic crap of all types with no knowledge of woodworking, they use whatever type of plastic allows them to sell their push stick shaped object for as little as possible. So how do you tell the difference between bad plastic and good plastic? Honestly, I wish it were a lot easier. Unfortunately, Many retailers don't specify the type of plastic they use, and very few table saw accessories have any markings on them that would identify the type of plastic. Sometimes a close inspection can help. For example, these two push sticks look very similar. This one has a bit more surface texture, but they seem to both be fairly hard to the touch. The only way to tell that there is a difference is to shave it with a knife. One of them shaves fairly easily, while the other one is tougher. So this one is softer than this one. And I know that this softer one isn't going to shatter if it comes in contact with the saw blade, because somebody in my shop has been careless with it, and you can see cut marks on the end. I can't be sure that this one won't, because it's never been hit by a blade. 
Interestingly, the softer of the two, which came from Rockler, has one large magnet on the side, and the harder of the two, which is an Amazon knockoff, has two small magnets. In the 731 video, you can see that he tests what looks like the same cheap double magnet push stick. And while it did not catastrophically shatter, it did splinter, and perhaps something even more telling occurred. Notice how the end of the stick caught so hard on the blade that it ripped out of the screws holding it to its jig. One could imagine that such a violent catch might also rip this right out of your hand. That's perhaps the more likely risk with hard plastic push sticks. Yes, they may shatter, but time and again, the various sticks he tested caught hard on the blade's teeth, which cause a range of dangerous reactions, from a startling jerk, to a kickback that punched a hole in his throat insert, and even a violent ejection from the jig. I wouldn't want to be near a spinning saw blade when any of those things happened. Now at this point, I suspect many of you may conclude that the 731 video is saying you should avoid plastic push sticks altogether, but that's not necessarily true. As I said, reputable manufacturers that specialize in woodworking products choose their materials specifically so they can be cut without shattering. A few online retailers do state somewhere in the description that their product is shatter resistant or something to that effect, so you should look for that. If they don't, you can sometimes read reviews for experiences of those who have used the product to see if a bunch of people are having these things explode on them. Now what about wooden push sticks? After all, a scrap of wood can be transformed into a safety device for a little more expenditure than some spare time. And honestly, that is a great option, as long as you use sturdy material, preferably with grain that runs from end to end, so it won't snap in half along some weak grain while you're using it. Interestingly, that 731 video didn't recommend a wooden push stick. Instead, he recommended the Bow Push Pro. Now, I'm sure some viewers wondered why would he suggest buying something that you can so easily make yourself. Well, I've actually used the Push Pro a fair amount myself, and I think I can add a bit more context to that part of the video, too. It comes down to comfort and convenience. This is a comfortable push stick to hold and use. The handle is just the right angle to the body. It's a nice ergonomic grip. You could make something similar to this shape from wood. You'd need something thicker than standard three-quarter inch material, and you do have to do a fair amount of shaping to get the nice comfortable handle, but you could definitely make something similar except for that replaceable tip. And that tip is really what makes the difference because not only can you cut through the high density foam with the saw blade, but if it, that does happen and the end gets chewed up, you don't have to remake your nice comfortable push stick that you spent so much time shaping. You just pop in a new foam insert on the end and that amounts to about four bucks per repair. And some just may consider that to be a better option than remaking what they spent so much time to make comfortable. This video really isn't about the push stick. I'll link to it below if you want to check it out. But the points I really want you to get from this video is that push sticks in general are not inherently dangerous. In fact, they're important safety devices that you should be using, whether you make one or you buy one. If you do have a plastic push stick, it's not necessarily dangerous either, but you should know that some particularly discount priced versions may be made from very hard plastic that can shatter or kick back when they contact the blade. So if you think yours may be too hard or brittle, consider replacing it with a better one or make one yourself from some sturdy straight grained wood. And finally, as a general rule, don't be careless with any of your safety devices. Like a seatbelt in a car, we use them hoping that we may never truly need them. Now check this out. MyWoodcutters.com is the sort of small business I like to support. Stefan is a great guy and he can find you knives and cutters for almost any joiner, planer, shaper, or molding machine. And his are the best prices if you're planning to upgrade to a Helico Carbide Cutter Head. Please use the link below this video to check with him before you buy somewhere else. Some small businesses are just worth supporting.